A treat for all. Adapted from Roald Dahl's novel, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is arguably the greatest family film ever made, starring the irreplaceable Gene Wilder as the titular Wonka, with terrific music throughout. In a world of pure imagination, which garnered an Academy Award nomination, and uniquely strong performances from the children, for which sometimes director Mel Stewart was a little too demanding of. We'll get to that. This delicious 1971 masterpiece is wildly original, with a message to use your imagination and believe in yourself. It taught us all lessons as we watched spoiled child after child fail to make the honorable choice. From golden tickets to Oompa Loompas, the everlasting gobstopper, this film gave us so much, including introducing the world-famous song The Candy Man, which Sammy Davis Jr. would turn into a number one hit. The Candy Man. The Candy Man. Davis actually pushed to play the candy store owner, but Mel Stewart thought such a big star like Sammy would break the reality of the film. I'm your host, Nostalgic Nick, and today we're going back to Wonka's factory. If you enjoy this golden throwback, please be sure to like this video for us and subscribe to the channel so you never miss a premiere. Now let's get on with it. We have to get on, we have to get on, we have so much time and so little to do. The suspense is terrible. I hope it'll last. Gene Wilder. The mysterious chocolatier himself, Wonka was eccentric and wonderfully sarcastic. A little nonsense now and then is relished by the wisest brilliantly played by Gene Wilder, who was nominated for a Golden Globe and many think was Oscar snubbed. One of Wilder's first credits was the socially awkward Billy Bibbit in the original Broadway production of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, opposite star Kirk Douglas. In 1963, Gene co-starred in a production opposite Anne Bancroft, who introduced him to her husband, Mel Brooks. This led to his breakout performance in Brooks's The Producers. Mr. Bialystok, I cannot finish you these conditions you make me extremely nervous for which mel won an oscar for best screenplay and gene was also nominated for supporting actor four years later in 71 he had starred in two other films but he still had the gumption to only accept willy wonka with one condition his limp entrance turned somersault gene had a vision from the get-go the audience would never know when wonka was telling the truth this specific entrance was so memorable and playful the reactions of the children children were genuine, and it set the tone for the entire factory tour. Wilder was one of the greatest comedic actors of all time, from young Frankenstein, that's Frankenstein, to his defeated and drunk Waco kid in Blazing Saddles. Gene had a gift. His last role was in the early 2000s on the hit show Will and Grace. Oh, okay, well, I'll try to be more considerate in the future. In his free time, Wilder and wife SNL superstar Gilda Radner loved to paint watercolors and donate to charitable causes. Gene sadly died in 2016 from complications of Alzheimer's. He was 83 years old. There is no life I know to compare with pure imagination. Living there, you'll be free. If you truly wish to be. Julie Dawn Cole. Don't care how I want it now. Veruca Salt was the bratty, greedy teen who had her poor father wrapped around her spoiled finger. Anything you say, sweetheart? This film was Julie Dawn Cole's acting debut. The I Want It Now sequence was filmed on her 13th birthday, and Cole was gifted three film props, a golden egg, a golden ticket, and an everlasting gobstopper. Immediately after returning from Willy Wonka, Cole landed a recurring snobbish teenager on And Mother Makes Three. In 1975, she got a breakout role, being cast as one of the leading characters in the BBC medical drama Angels. I'm just going to take your teeth out. They'll be all ready and waiting for you when you wake up. Julie still does act regularly, as well as working as a psychotherapist since 2001. Today, she is 63 years old, and her last appearance was in 2013 on the soap Casualty. It was her fourth episode for this show, her first all the way back in 1987. Rory Kinnear. Mr. Salt was Veruca's father, who really did a poor job sticking up to his demanding child. Wonka, how much do you want for the Golden Goose? They're not for sale. Name the price. 
Kinnear was an acting powerhouse in England, most notably as the character Planche in the 1973 Three Musketeers. He reprised this role for the 1974 and 1989 sequels, but terribly during the filming of the third installment, Kinnear fell from a horse in Spain and suffered internal bleeding which led to a fatal heart attack the following day. He was just 54 years old. Kinnear's family successfully sued the studio for cutting corners, and the director of the picture quit the film business as a result. Michael Bolner Augustus Gloop is very greedy and gluttonous, often seen eating. How does it make you feel to be the first golden ticket finder? Hungry! Which inevitably led to his suffocatingly tubular demise. Don't worry, an Augustus dummy was used for many of the shots of the poor boy getting sucked up into the chocolate tube. The chocolate river itself was made up of 150,000 gallons of water, real chocolate, and cream. The dairy, of course, caused quite a stink towards the end of the production, and Bolner described it as, quote, dirty, stinky water. Of German descent, Bolner should be given much credit for delivering his lines, which for him were a foreign language, but Michael Bolner took the one-hit wonder title to heart, as his gloop is his only acting credit. I guess he learned his lesson and decided to live in moderation. Michael now works as a tax accountant and is 62 years old. Jack Albertson Grandpa Joe was bedridden until Charlie's golden ticket inspired him to not only accompany Charlie on the sought-after tour, but also motivated Joe to frolic about. Cause I've got a golden ticket. I've got a golden chance to make my way. What a recovery. Jack Albertson got his big break in 1958 with 20 episodes of The Thin Man. A decade later, in 68, he won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. For the film, the subject was roses. Such a gentleman Jack was. He even apologized to child actor Jack Wilde, who was also nominated for his artful Dodger in Oliver. Jack didn't apologize to Gene Wilder, nominated for the producers. I'm hysterical! A year after Wonka in 72, Jack was in another Hollywood blockbuster, the star-studded Poseidon Adventure. Most people know Jack as Ed, or The Man, from the popular sitcom Chico and the Man, co-starring with Freddie Prince until his terribly sad suicide in season 3. Jack's final role was in 1982 with My Body, My Child, a TV movie released posthumously, for which he was actually nominated for a primetime Emmy. He was sadly diagnosed with colorectal cancer in 1978, and died in 81 at the age of 78. Paris Themen Mike TV, the kid who's obsessed with television and westerns, hence the family name, who gets miniaturized in a very psychedelic Wonka Vision experiment. What do you get from a glut of TV? A pain in the neck and an IQ of three. I mean, Wonka did warn him, kind of. Stop, don't come back. After Mike TV, actor Paris Themen took a hiatus from acting to just be a kid. He would go on to found Access International, a travel service that arranged Europe-bound charter flights for backpackers. Paris also runs a photography business and appears at conventions all the time. In October 2015, his wife appeared on Jeopardy and won twice. Themen himself was a Jeopardy contestant in March 2018. 18, finishing in second place. Smart family. Today, he's in his early 60s and living in Los Angeles. Denise Nickerson. Don't you know what this is? My gum, it's gum! Wrong! Violet Beauregard was the chewing gum fanatic and world record holder. Denise Nickerson was an experienced child star by the time she became a blueberry. You might remember her as Amy Collins in 72 episodes of the gothic Dark Shadows. Following the success of Willy Wonka, she joined the Short Circus music group for 130 episodes on The Electric Company. She even guest starred in the final season of The Brady Bunch as Pam Pamela, one of the two dates that Peter Brady had in one night. For more on The Bunch, we have two great episodes highlighting the cast and the behind-the-scenes events from that legendary sitcom. Denise's final acting role was when she was 21, in the 1978 film Zero to Sixty, opposite Darren McGavin. Afterwards, she decided to retire. Unfortunately, she soon discovered that her parents had squandered her savings. Denise worked as an office manager and accountant at a doctor's office. In 2019, following a severe stroke, Denise passed away at 62 years old from pneumonia. 
Peter Ostrom, Charlie Bucket, an innocent and wonderfully sweet young boy whose dreams come true one fateful day when his chocolate bar held his golden ticket. Peter Ostrom does a remarkable job, but after Wonka's completion, and despite being offered a three-film contract, Peter decided to walk away from acting entirely. You see, the Wonka shoot was very difficult for all the children, but Peter in particular due to the heavy scene load and his inexperience as an actor. Plus, Mel Stewart didn't give the kids a lot of slack. He demanded perfection. The legacy of Willy Wonka has followed Ostrom forever, including teaming up with Dunkin' Donuts and handing out golden tickets to children for unlimited Dunkin' coffee for a whole year. Cause kids love coffee. Cheer up, Charlie. To find out what Peter has been up to these days, check out our Then and Now video highlighting the biggest 1970s children stars. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is certainly one of the greatest films ever, even if the Oompa Loompas terrified some kids. But they were good guys. Actually, one of the ten was female, who loved to party too. Reportedly, they were known for traveling in a limo together from bar to bar, hopefully singing songs once one would drop out for being too drunk. We all crave to open those tiny doors and walk into a candy wonderland with freedom to eat our weight in goodies. There was something magical about this film, and much of the credit goes to Gene Wilder and company. So tell us, who is your favorite character? Have you ever read the Source novel or seen the more recent Johnny Depp portrayal? I'd rather not talk about this one. Tell us your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like this video for us, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But that's it for now, from all of us here at Do You Remember, a little nonsense now and then is relished by the wisest men. Do, buddy, do.